sure do. Hey guys, I am Canadian Saint Nick. Uh, today we'll be looking at doing public games easily in 45 minutes. I think one of the biggest mistakes people tend to make when considering Frost Knight or, or the public games when seeing um, a lot of streamers is that uh, they really get set in their ways of, you know, like one, you need a constructor, two, you need a soldier, three, you need a, a dedicated farmer to go the distance. Um, but you really don't don't need any of those to be honest with you um, If you want to go the, the distance in frost night 45 minutes regardless of if, if you're in the hundred zones um, Assuming of course your power level is at the very least um, You know at or around The power level that you'll be fighting in frost night. So for instance, I'm 131 So I'm ridiculously overpowered for a 100 zone, which means I will go beyond that I will test the limits as I have with you know Isherwood, Allura etc etc um it's just uh if you are you know if you were challenging this as a level 100 this kind of this kind of play style would be fine enough to get you that um 45 minute mark to get all your rewards so one of the biggest mistakes people tend to make is when selecting their hero they they get locked into these choices of you know oh we need a power base you don't really need a power base if if all four of you you know take a side and you all do your own farming and even if you don't have like an Outlander bonus for bonus loot, um, the map already has bonus loot on it. So that's like you're already getting the Outlander bonus default on every single thing you farm. You just have to know what to farm, when to farm it. And once you get that down, uh, your hero can literally be anything you want. So for this, I'm going to go with Serotep. She's a ninja. Really easy. Uh, really easy to play as. Really easy to... Uh, uh, manage the early game because I could just dragon slash take out all the smaller husk and then focus on the husky husks themselves who you know might be at about half health or uh, depending on your level they could have as much as 75% health um, so this is this is one play style you could of course go with some of the more powerful ability based outlanders you know shock specialist uh, fragment flurry these guys, they won't really bite you in the back when using them, but uh, you just have to remember that if you use like a Fragment Flurry or a Shamrock Claimer, you know, one of those, uh, I forget what the class is called itself. Uh, I think they're actually just called Reclaimers. One of those Reclaimers, um, you're going to you're gonna have a lack of mobility. Um, so the Ninja gets 10% movement speed by itself. They also get Double Jump, which kind of acts as like another Phase Shift boost. Um, obviously a little bit less of a cooldown on the double jump but uh the energy cost is a little bit more the uh the dragon slash really serves to help take things out quickly um you're gonna have a little bit less damage versus smashers per se with the dragon ninja um you can opt for like a shuriken master where you just you know endlessly throwing stars or a smoke bomb uh, it's just it'll be a little bit different of a play style that I'm, I'm not really used to I can't really flesh that out for you uh, But for the purposes of this guide I you know I would say if you're trying to just get that 45 minute mark Serotep dragon ninja, you know dragon scourge uh, These these kinds of characters are absolutely fine if you're trying to get a completion which right now is 2 hours 14 minutes and 51 seconds after wave 30 um, Probably don't want a ninja on your team uh, they're under power. They don't really play well with others. Um, their abilities are nice for wave clearing if if you get into you know uh, some deep trouble. But with the way the enemies scale all the way up to I think like level two seventeen, roughly, uh, you're not gonna you're not gonna carry far because the the dragon slash is already underpowered for enemies that are at or or above your level. Um, let alone you know anywhere between. 80 to 120 levels above you so just keep that in mind when using the dragon ninja for longer than 45 minutes but if you're just trying to get to that 45 minute mark serotep really good um, especially versus takers even when you dragon slash you could go through the taker charge itself um, so you come out on the other side unscathed the taker will be baffled they'll you know turn up in the middle of their charge assuming of course that dragon slash doesn't kill them outright um yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much my coverage for heroes. I think you know, you, obviously these soldiers are always going to be useful for smashers, etc. Uh, just with the scaling of the husk, they can be useful. Urban assault is good. Uh, there's there's really no wrong choice here. Oh, that's not what I wanted. 
Uh, I'm on private right now, so I can't actually show you that. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to find Peak Storm Shield Defense, and I'm going to show you the layout of the base itself and how you can build it efficiently, uh, really quickly, if there's, you know, four people. And if everybody's kind of familiar with this, um, and they're kind of familiar with each side, um, it really becomes a, a non-factor. Um, towards the end, you, you could pretty much just uh, just kind of waltz your way through just by killing whatever comes out of your trap tunnels. Um, and the trap tunnels themselves are extremely easy to set up. I know I released a previous guide on the frost dome build uh, that was very complicated for a lot of people. That's meant strictly for you know us sweaty players who want to go that full two hours, 14 minutes, 51 seconds after wave 30. It's actually meant to go upwards of two hours and 45 minutes depending on your gadgets, depending on your team comp, depending on your chemistry. Um, I think it could probably push maybe 250, uh, but again, the game doesn't go that high, so we, uh, we don't know how high it'll go. Um, I'm a bit disappointed I crafted that off of pure efficiency, um, but now, you know, the game's like, ah, uh, you know, efficiency doesn't really matter. So, uh, now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna show you guys, like, the very easy way to get 45 minutes. It's, it's not difficult. Just taking this long console loading time in. Don't mind me, I'm just, you know, standing here in my long console loading time. It's not a problem. It's okay. Nobody really minds long loading time. Uh, ignore this repair. metal wall in front of me. Check this is actually the back shield console menu to deposit resources. Oh no, that was actually a wall. The map. I was inside of a dark. You can leave any time by Anyways, selecting This is part of the, the sweaty the build, so console. we'll ignore that. We'll drop down here. I'm actually going to head over here first because a lot of people uh, watched my last video, which was an hour and 22 minutes long, on how to build the sweaty build, which is actually hanging above us right now, um, just so that I could get a full grasp of the terrain for everybody. Um, and this is pretty much the main trap tunnel you use in it. I, I like to call it a pistol trap tunnel formation, uh, just because it looks a little bit like a pistol, or if you're from Australia, I, I, would, I would call it a boomerang. Uh, but essentially... Uh, you, you know, wall launchers into uh, what David Dean calls the timeout room, and then you have a gas room on the end of it. Um, the gas room serves as uh, minor pathing, and with full reload on your wall launchers, you can just effectively keep them here, um, so long as they're not like right here. And the, the husks that are right here while the wall launcher fires off and puts them back, um, they'll probably get out, but they'll get out at anywhere between 25 to 50% health, which is next to nothing. That's like two shots in today's Fortnite. Um, Everybody in chat, thank you for watching. Uh, I'm just going over the how to get 45 minutes in public games right now for Frost Knight. Um, so uh, one of the things we notice about the pistol formation as well is it's very craft and materials intensive, right? So we have seven planks, seven rough ore for the wall launchers. We have, you know, uh, I use legendary floor spikes just because just because I have the resources in, in uh, most public matches, except for Frost Knight's uh, a little bit plank inducive. So uh, I think these are like nine planks or something like that. Eight planks. Eight planks, two duct tape, and two twine. So that's almost double the cost of Epic, I believe, um, let alone Blues. So uh, they're very cost, very costly in the long run. Same with Dynamos. You're going to be low on nuts and bolts pretty much the entire match. Wall darts again with those planks. Um, and then, of course, just having three gas traps is, you know, three bacon, 21 fibrous herbs into itself, n not to mention the oxidized powder that you need for the pretty much everything in here except for the darts and the floor spikes, right? So... This is very heavy for the crafting materials that you're going to need in the match. And it's something that you might not be able to build by yourself. It would something you would need a team to kind of cooperate and say, okay, you go to the bacon farm, you get all the bacon to make these materials. Okay, you go get some nuts and bolts in the town by breaking down some metal. Um, somebody break down trees so we get lots of planks. And, and uh, while you're breaking down trees, maybe hit some rocks so we get a bit of rough ore on the side here. Uh, so... This can be very difficult for a team to coordinate with each other in a public game. So this is this is meant for teams who want to go the distance in uh, in Frost Night, if you will. You know those those over an hour and a half marked people. Uh, so what we have down here actually is the Frost Night map done according to squares. I've even taken the liberty of using some materials here. So these would be the cars um, on the northeast side. You'll notice like some stone walls. 
uh, covered by some trees. You notice I built this rock formation out of tier 2 metal just because, why not? I had the materials, uh, and it, I wanted it to kind of be glaringly obvious. Um, so this is on the northwest side. It's kind of hard to tell on my mini-map, but I have it up there as well. Uh, so keep that in mind. This is the rock formation. We'll be building around it. Um, a little bit on top of it too. There's a little bit of a rock wall here as well with some trees and there's also a down tree behind it. And then of course this is the barn. I'm not going to build a giant barn for you guys. I kind of wasted all my wood on the top build up there. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm running a little bit low and for this build I'm going to need a little bit too. So uh, keep in mind this is actually the pond. I couldn't find a way to do like a little dock here on the end. Actually it'd be, it'd probably be over here. Um, but there are some big rocks right here and here, uh, just something to keep in, in mind. And then of course we have the cliff, which uh, goes about three squares high up there. Might be able to just double jump. Double jump. It should, it might actually go one square higher than that right there. Um, but then it, it drops down along the ledge here. Uh -uh. Um, so this, this is the map, you know, you, we spawn in, we spawn in right here. Oh, uh, I should mention this, to the north side. This is a, a two square gradual rise. So it starts rising from this square and it finally reaches the top here where we're standing um, after, you know, after going through this. And I didn't really have a way to represent that in our building tools. So what I did was I did a double stairs here just to, just to kind of show you that we can't build here. We can't trap here, even though we can technically trap on stairs now. Um, we can't actually build here because it's just a two two-step gradual rise or a two-square gradual rise here. Um, so anything we want to build uh, would have to take that into account here. Uh, we do have the gradual descent here on the east side. It's only one square, however, uh, so we don't need to worry too much about that. Um, I think that's about it. Um, obviously, the pond is, is completely flat right now. Um, if it wasn't completely flat, you'd want to go pretty much against the barn. You want to go about five squares. I got about four there. Five to six squares outwards. Um, and just cover the pond itself so they could walk across it. Um, it won't be completely necessary to make a tier two. Uh, we are going to go over some trap tunnels in the short term here. We're just going to start, you know, kind of clearing the area of any any obstacles that might be in our path. And again, this, this might not be your order of operations because of, of having a team around you. Uh, you're gonna again thanks for that uh, structure limit warning appreciate it wonder if we'll have enough for this build we'll see uh, so again with the with the team you know everybody's gonna split off in their own directions they're gonna have their own objectives but pretty much everybody's gonna do the exact same thing um, whether they admit it or not and that's one they're gonna farm materials two they're gonna farm materials that they don't know what to do with um, so they're they're gonna end up making traps and because of the state of Fortnite right now everybody has at least you know a gas trap or a ceiling electric uh, field um, they all have wall darts they all have floor spikes right so they're just gonna start crafting traps that they can make um, but of course again that takes materials so they're gonna start farming materials um, and then they're gonna come back for the defenses so it's it's about um, understanding what your teammates are going to do and then playing with that um, so everybody's gonna be farming right everybody's gonna be crafting traps to a degree or everybody's gonna come back and farm um, and playing with that is going to be probably your biggest challenge because there's going to be some soldiers who are pretty grenade happy um, and it's not like we get a lot of propanes in the first 45 minutes um, I think around the 30 minute mark is when the first propanes come but it uh, it still gets difficult um, yeah we do have to take out this barn so keep that in mind there is a chest in the barn itself Though it is under the back southeast corner of the barn. Um, I believe it would be right here. It would be uh, covered by some stairs. I believe most of us know about that chest simply from the chest run exploit that people have been doing. I think, uh, I think a few people have made videos on that. Uh, so we got rid of the barn. We've got rid of all our obstacles around the base. Uh, it's, it's looking fairly clear. 
by now. Um, one thing to make note of, I did build the base itself out of steel. You're not going to have enough steel to do this early game. It's not. You're not going to have enough steel throughout the game to keep this up unless you have a power base who's like a dedicated builder. But if you're going for the 45 minute mark, uh, generally around the 45 minute mark, the power base will finally start making metal um, like in a surplus. So by that point, you're going to be like, oh, well, we're already done. And there's there's not really going to be a point. You'll you'll probably have made anywhere between uh, four to five hundred metal at that point. And while that that can go the distance, it's it's not going to make much of a difference opposed to stone in this game mode. Um, stone's going to be a lot easier to find for the teammates. It's going to be a lot easier to farm. It's going to be a lot more efficient to farm. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna use stone for the base itself. It's easier to repair as well. So if if you're there's some lava underneath this, so sometimes it jumps up and spikes us. Um, if you're building out of stone or if you're defending the base or you're standing here shooting on, you know, the first few waves, uh, stone's going to be a lot easier to... Oh, that's awkward. Stone's going to be a lot easier to repair. It's going to repair faster. Um, and it's just going to be a lot easier to keep up uh, as opposed to metal. You're going to run out of metal really, really quick. And, uh, of course, that's, that's no bueno. So the first thing we're going to want to do, I think 9 out of 10 times, most people get attacked from the west. And when you get attacked from the west, the first thing you want to do is you want to put a wall here, and a wall here, and a wall here, and then you want to put a little cap on top, and then whatever material you used on the bottom, I advise metal, you want to do the alternate material on top here, and you don't need a wall launcher right there, but eventually, uh, you know, maybe around the 35 minute mark, you want to put a wall launcher right here. And then as you jump out, put a cap on top because that'll help you later on um, as far as trap tunnels go on the west side we're gonna go something like this actually no. uh, we'll see about this wall and again we're not gonna have all the all the materials for this yes I am gonna use be using 130s here uh, you're gonna have to put a wall here because these are part of the rock face so you're gonna have to build walls here they don't have to be level two uh, immediately i would advise whatever walls are against these to be level two um, same with these walls that i'm about to place like this one and this one and then wall darts are fine you just put those wall darts right here and two floor spikes and these are pretty much gonna be the trap tunnels we're gonna set up on everything um, not all sides are gonna have two uh, it's just the west side is very very compact they don't have much squares to trap before they get here because there is a giant well it's not a giant but there is a cliff here which kind of goes on and on uh, oh 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 all right oh wow all right Um Okay, so with the with the cliff there, you know, we can't we can't really build too close to it. Um now this build it takes two gas straps or this side it takes two gas straps. It's fairly easy. You could start with the one to be honest with you. You could even ignore the second trap tunnel here and just put a floor spikes here and put a gas trap here. Obviously your gas traps probably won't be 130, that's fine. Whatever kind of gas trap you have. Uh, so long as it's comparable to the level of husk you're fighting uh, when you start the match. So, like, if you're in a level 100, 106, 82s, you know, have 82s, so on and so forth. If your 82s are, like, epic perked up, um, they have good perks on them, like uh, crit rate, crit damage, as I have, um, then your 82 should be fine versus, you know, level 100 husk. So if you start at, like, an 88 zone or a 94 zone, by all means, just... Throw your 82 gas up there, it'll be fine. Um, this side, we actually want to block off the first square. Okay, so just use the base's reference, go out, um, right beside the cliff, you're going to want to block off the first square, and then we're just going to go ahead and create another one. And I call these gas rooms. Oh, at least that's the habit. Wall launchers, and when doing your wall launchers, you're going to want to place wall darts for the start here. If your wall darts ever run out, just go ahead and swap in a dynamo if you have the uh, materials for it. It's just nuts and bolts are going to be very hard to come by in the early game. Um, for this one, I would recommend putting a gas trap on the end. Another floor spike. 
And then something like... Uh, yeah, we'll go like this. And then do something like this. Uh, what will happen is if a smasher comes through here, um, you're going to want to reinforce these two, by the way, um, eventually. So take these to tier two when possible. Um, sometimes a smasher will just like get caught in between here. And then they'll just take a smack at it. And one smack, will they'll live for it. That'll be fine. Uh, but once they get beyond it, or once they smack it twice, then it'll, it'll be real, real, real tough for them to get through. So we're going to want to reinforce it to tier two. Uh, we put the stairs behind here because if the smasher comes through and they don't see the stairs, but they see this wall here, there's, there's a small percentage chance that they actually rush through this wall, uh, which of course would be no bueno because then they're rushing at the base itself. Even though there's backward stairs, it's kind of like an awkward, awkward setup and an awkward smasher mechanic. We don't really know why it happens. Um, and it doesn't happen all the time, so it's not like we could uh, hash it out. Um, generally, I do find they do that, like, if you if you leave, like, walls like this next to the base. Um, I find they charge, you know, 9 out of 10 times. Um, I find that happens, but sometimes even without those walls, and with this wall here, without the backward stairs right behind it, um, it comes forward. Oh, my God. Hi, Mel. Hi, Zamir. Thank you for stopping in. Yeah, Joe, a lot of people get stopped on the 45 minute mark, so I thought I'd make a nice easy representation for people to uh, to kind of come in here and do a nice easy completion, if you will. Um, so for this one, it's kind of a complicated spawn. No, that's not what we want. Um, like so. But you also want to do this. Okay, so we're reinforcing the outside of these walls with this, uh, just so that they don't beat against it and then start coming through. Um, it really forces them into this gap itself. Um, again, we can, whenever possible, put floor spikes on the front. We're going to do double gas, but so long as you just have this initial... Um, I'm just going to jump up here so the lava doesn't kill me potentially. Um, so long as you have this initial gas room set up, you're absolutely fine. We're going to be setting up approximately eight of these. Um, so you're going to need eight gas traps, eight wall launchers, eight wall darts or wall dynamos, and eight floor spikes at the very start. That'll be fine. What's going to make it out of these things are going to be husky husk, um, occasionally propane tanks, smashers, blasters won't make it out of it, flingers will make it out of this, um, takers are obviously going to make it out of this. Uh, so it's, it's all the heavy stuff you need to be shooting at anyways. Uh, so just keep that in mind when doing this. Ooh, whoops, whoops, here we go, here we go. Okay, so you see how I multi-layer it? So I put steel on the front, even though we're going to have a, a lack of steel throughout the game, I still want to multi-layer it so that if we get an elemental wave with water or nature, um, if they're going to, you know, ignore this steel altogether, they're they're not going to ignore things like the, uh, the stone. Um, I've also taken the liberty of putting a wall in between here. You could take and put a wall in between there as well. For some reason, the husk just viewed that as like an extra pathing wall, and it's like a little bit less aggro for them. Um, if you really get up on materials as well, you could start putting wall launchers on the inside of these walls, um, or even the outside walls if you wanted to. I would advise the outside walls first, to be honest. Uh, I find it helps a lot more, but uh, a lot of people like doing the inside walls. Uh, I'll let you know when I figure out why. Um, So again, we're just we're doing simple pathing here. Um, whenever setting up these walls, generally you want to have it set up so that they come back to the burner itself. And what I mean by that, I can't show you in that tunnel because the burner's right behind me. But if if the wall launcher knocks them over here, um, if they want to go to the burner, they still have to go over here, right? Like there's still this opening. If they get knocked over here, they still get the burn the burner over here. Let's say if we had the wall launcher on this wall instead, and they knocked them over here, well, well, where's the burner? It's over here right and you you can reinforce this wall um, you can even if you get the materials created a, a double um, one by one and that's that's what we'll get to eventually is building one by ones inside of one by ones or uh, gas rooms inside of gas rooms if you will no uh, again taking it all to tier two just in case something takes a random whack at it uh, but for the most part 
we want to make sure that they come back to the base itself. Um, with the sole exception of this east side, we can't really do much about that. So you just take it to tier 2. Um, it should be enough for the 45 minute mark. You shouldn't have that much of an issue with it. Um, especially if it's, if it's dead on like this. The east side's kind of cool too. You could build a couple walls in this little ditch here and create another one by one. You could do two by twos. Or you could do a, a two two by one gas room. I don't know. You double up on gas rooms. I'll just... English is hard sometimes for me, guys. Even though it is my native language. Um, it is it is difficult to speak at times. And uh, I attribute that to probably dropping myself on my head as a child. Um, but we'll get back to that when I do, like, I don't know, an autobiography or something. Yes. Um, so we have, you know, a, a... Oh, man, I'm out of stone. I don't even have any of my storm shield. That's okay. We'll make do. Even though, from here on out, guys, from here on out, if there's nothing else you listen from me, then this part, you want to build each one of these gas rooms out of stone. Even though I'm going to be building out of steel build these out of stone because stone is going to be the most abundant easily efficient resource on the frost night map um but i'm going to be building out of steel because i'm out of stone and i i can't farm anymore in twine peaks unfortunately um so this is the east side you can double up on gas rooms here um it's just there are uh ignore the stairs to my uh these ones these are just anchoring the entire build uh so if i get rid of it We'll all, we'll all just disappear. Uh, maybe we'll do that for the end if, if I feel like it. But there are there's a gradual rise here. It goes about two squares. Um, no, no, it doesn't. It's it's once... No, it goes, it goes two squares. It starts out here. Um, and then it starts going up. And it's difficult for them to climb it. So generally they opt for, you know, the straightaway, which is this tunnel. Even with the, the two gas rooms there, they'll still opt for that one tunnel. And it's absolutely devastating when they go in there. The only downside is that sometimes on the east side they spawn super close. And it can destroy this wall. And if you're in like the 2 hour 10 minute mark. It will also destroy like this wall. This wall. Sometimes even these two. Actually no it, it did. It did destroy all these walls. Um, so we ended up losing like our entire east side at the 2 10 minute mark. Um, so that was rough. But uh, as far as going to 45 minute mark. These, these tunnels should relatively hold well. Um, but I, I did the whole thing where I was like, man, I'm going to build this for, for the easy, easy people. And then it, I didn't, I, I partially lied. Um, so again, you know, we just got pathing here. I would advise, you know, doing some stone in the middle here. It's absolutely fine. Metal is still going to be your strongest pathing resource, even if there's nature. Um, it's still going to have the most health. So having walls on the inside that are metal can be very beneficial for getting rid of aggro. Um, so even if you do the outside and stone and then put steel on the inside, um, the nature husk will be like, oh my god, there's so much more health on that inside wall. I can't, I can't deal with it. I won't beat through these walls. Um, not that these walls themselves generate a ton of aggro. Um, so again, you know, just set it up so that Wherever the wall launcher knocks them to, they're coming back to the base. Do, uh, nope. I need... I don't even know what I was trying to edit there. I don't even... I can't play anymore. Alright, here we go. Um, this, this side's a lot easier to start from this, so we just go three. Thank you, Lava, for the love tap. All right, all right, we're carrying another gas room. I mean, it's, it's fairly easy, it's just getting the pathing down, right? So on the, on the west side, you're going to go right beside the rock face to the northwest, and then you're going to, uh, go three squares out of your gas room. And then you're going to start building this one by one. So I'll show you here. You got the rock face right here. Um, it's one square, you know, to the left. And then three squares or four squares forward. Um, this is the very edge of the rock face right there where we put a wall up. And then, of course, you know, we do our gas room. And then we go three squares over. And then we got another gas room. Um, I I could. And then you go something like this. There is a... 
oh i think right right here or here um where the barn is there's uh there's a stairs where there's a hole but it's not really necessary to take advantage of in the first 45 minutes um simply because your traps you know you're gonna have a lot of them you have a lot of durability um so you can go like this again take to tier two whenever possible um ignore love taps from the lava that'll be fine And this all sounds nice, right? Like, it all sounds relatively easy. I think the... Yeah, the burn's right there. Um, but now comes the difficult part, right? If, if you've played Frost Knight, you know that um, the biggest difficulty is going to be... Actually, you could probably reinforce this corner. The biggest, the biggest problem is going to be lobbers. Um, nine out of ten times, we're going to have lobber issues. I'm putting these ceilings down because what they'll act as is anchors for your gas straps. Um, so let's say like a propane goes off. For some reason, propanes like to go off and randomly. I'm sure, you know, no soldier threw a grenade on them or anything. Uh, but for some reason, sometimes the ceilings uh, stay intact. Uh, but they just don't get anchored, right? Like we build these these funnel tunnels, but we don't anchor the ceilings to anything other than the walls that are actually holding the the tunnel up. We don't have to reinforce these in between tunnels, by the way. I just did because I was a little bit bored. Um, you can make these out of wood because of the wall inside the tunnel right here. It will generally block the propane so long as there's not you know multiple explosions, upwards of three, four, five, or six explosions. Um, after that, we start getting our, our lobber, um, lobber protection, and a lot of people are gonna, are gonna recognize it. It's just a bowl. Um, I haven't found a more useful. Double jump. Oops, that's awkward. <sighs> Oof. Love tap brought me to my knees, guys. That was a good love tap by the lava. This is Twine Peak, so there's a giant lava pit below me. Um, and it likes to throw out some la lava tips. Yeah, all right. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um, if you do something like this, remember to break it because sometimes the lobbers will target that over the trap tunnels. Um, if anybody's seen any of the record runs uh, that I've done, you know that the bowl is kind of like the my bread and butter. It's it's well, it's not my bread and butter. Usually the gas room is my bread and butter. Um, okay, that's just a random sitting up there. We're only gonna do this three high because I do have the sweaty build on top of me. If you're in your lobby, I would recommend going you know seven, eight, sometimes even nine high um, on the east side. Um, you just have to remember when starting on the east side. You literally just want to go one square out from the burner and then just start building upwards. Um, otherwise, you're going to touch the cliff face. That's to the southeast. This cliff face over here, you're, you're going to actually touch it so much that when they come in, they'll... Uh, or sorry, they're going to spawn on top of the cliff here. I'll, I'll word it like that. They're going to spawn on top of the cliff and then they could just walk in on top of your bowl and then down to your base, right? And that's, that's going to be the easiest route for them. Um, but if you just build one square out and then start building up, you're absolutely fine. You're gonna you're gonna stop them from coming in. Um, yeah, sure, we'll do it right here. Um, I'm just building random stairs in the base itself. Uh, you generally will probably only need you know one or two squares. What am I? Oh my goodness, I'm out of. I'm out of structures, guys. Can you believe it? Twine Peaks has a structure limit. Who knew that there was a structure limit in Twine Peaks, guys? Um, so what I'll do here is I'll actually I'll streamline this for you. I could I could actually do this with like four squares. So it's not it's not incredibly difficult. Um, actually, I should Cheers. probably leave that one. So yeah, on the east side, you go one square. On the north side, you go two squares and then up. 
right? One, two, build up. East side, one square. And then build up right here. Right? South side, two squares, build up. And west side, two squares, build up. Um, so I'm just going to do something like that. And then you want to meet them all together. And you will be going around this part. So that's why I put this little lid on. Uh, because it'll it'll be tough to kind of path it all around. Um, so you'll be coming in here. You'll be coming in here. Um, you're probably going to want to put like another wall and another ceiling right here. Uh, just to make it convenient. And when you build it up high enough. Uh, and as long as it's not connected to the base itself. The lovers will view it as like. Uh, uh, an obstacle they don't need to destroy so then they will <laughs> I see you swags don't worry um, I <laughs> so the, lo the lovers will see it as a obstacle they don't need to destroy so they'll start coming through your trap tunnels flingers will come through your trap tunnels um, so it won't be too difficult actually I'm gonna get rid of these so I could show you guys one last thing here um, so you know we have all our gas rooms set up um, we have our lava bowl set up but there's there's another instance that comes up that's very difficult to predict and it's very difficult to defend against and that's when lobbers start tossing bombs against your shield what you want to do is you want to go underneath your bowl and you want to just block off the the top rim here and you want to pretty much go all the way around um i could actually show you from the top sweaty build um what i did as well um what this does is here i'll show you uh, it's a lot easier on these sides because we build them right against the trap tunnels but the east side we have to go a little bit backwards right um just because of the southeast side cliff so this side's nice and easy you could actually make the bowl on the the south west and north sides and just run along the bowl from the inside placing these so here i'll just show you guys here real quick bam there's a wall right it's it's done um but the east side, you actually have to get inside underneath. It's not too difficult if you, you know, you just open this up a little bit and then you just run in real quick and just do a double leap. I would advise doing this when there's not a wave to this side. It's not difficult to set up. You need to do this by probably like wave four or five, I would say. You don't need to set up the inside of the bowl, but you do need to have the bowl set up. Um, or at least the sides that they are attacking. Um, and then some so like let's say if they attack the north side you want to go all the way to like the northwest side uh, so that they view it as like the quickest route for flingers and lobbers is through the trap tunnel right if they're attacking the east side you want to go a little bit to the southeast side a little bit to the south side as well for the bowl um, if they're attacking the south side you want to cover a little bit to the west and the east as well um, you want to create like this big old umbrella um, and even though this seems taxing you have to go a lot of up a lot of down um, it ends up being more efficient in resources, um, and with four people, it shouldn't be that difficult to set up, right? You just have to remember, you know, uh, to the west, to the north, and to the south, it is two squares, and then you start your lobber shield. And on the east side, it is one square, and then you start your lobber shield. One square away from the burner, um, and that's including the square itself with, uh, with the backward stairs. Um, so we have our lava shield set up now. We have the shield set up inside the lava. Actually, I could take you up to the sweaty build to show you that real quick. Um, going on up, going on up. So we got our sweaty build up here. Uh, I'm just going to jump inside of my tunnels. I think I have a... Yeah, so we're on top of the trap tunnels here. And you see here inside the build, I have, um, I didn't go too, oh, out, out here I did two squares high. And this this is what you want on the east side, you want to go two squares high. I tried it recently with uh, Isherwood's group. Um, well, we just took uh, a couple randoms. Well, not really randoms, Lego Man. And uh, I apologize, I can't remember your name as well. Uh, but they're not they're not really randoms. So they're good people. There are a lot of save the world uh, streams They're in a lot of save the world streams, but I did the one squares where I just went inside the bowl and placed them um, behind stairs uh, But on the east side I noticed that they started attacking like the inside of the bowl where the trap tunnels they could see um, The lobbers did not not extensively It was like one or two lobbers and then once one lobber broke a wall then they all, they all started kind of chiming in 
Um, and it was fixed once I added like a little bit of a band-aid to the bowl. I could show you that actually. Um, I only have two structures left to place. So I don't know if I could show you. But uh, all you want to do is on the east side, you, you just put it two squares high like I have here instead of the one square method. Uh, but that's just on the east side because the other sides you could cover with one square just fine. Um, actually, that's, that's still part of the rock wall. Um, as far as the band-aid that you want to put on if lovers are, are throwing at the base is one you want to make sure that it's not attached to the burner itself and then like let's say let's say they broke these three squares that I'm standing on I just highlighted right um, you just want to go like this um, okay well let's pretend there's these two squares and you want to put a little roof on it here and then you, uh, sorry you also want to put walls here so you put walls put walls there and then you put roofs here and they'll target all the squares that you need to reinforce. Um, <laughs> I see you swags. Just relax. Uh, it's a walkthrough. So I don't, uh, I don't look at chat too much during walkthroughs. Um, so you want to, you want to target all the squares that you, uh, that you, they'll target all the squares that you need to reinforce. So it's, it's fairly self-explanatory what you want to do. Um, or which ones you want to reinforce, I should say. But as far as the frost, frost night, you know, easy 45 minute run. I'll just go do a quick run through here. This is uh, this is pretty much it. Um, you don't you don't really need a whole bunch of traps on the inside here. You can put traps. They're probably just gonna get blown up anyways. Uh, just because of the nature of it. If you use a bunch of ninjas, it's easy to drag and slash any propanes that come through. If you shoot at propanes that come through, make sure you hit them in the chest. Um, you could use defenders with obliterators if you wanted to. Uh, just make sure to put them on the ground level. Uh, when defenders are shooting downwards, uh, what can end up happening is they'll, they'll, they'll shoot through everything, right? So let's say on the north side, they shoot downwards through this tunnel. It could hit, you know, if you have a separate trap tunnel down here, it could hit propanes that are on the ground over here. It's most notable most notable on the east side because, of course, we set up this, this double gas room on the bottom here. So if they shoot a propane, let's say he shoots them over here, um, they decide to shoot through their, like, let's say they're on the ceiling, I should say. Yeah, okay. Let's say they're on the ceiling right here, right? They shoot the propane. It goes through their, their head and it lands in the tunnel. Um, and there's a propane tank in the tunnel and it hits that propane tank. You're just lost in your tunnel because of the one obliterator. So make sure to put your obliterator defenders on the same elevation. Um, but once you have like these gas rooms set up, it, it becomes a very easy uh, defense, right? And we talk about this, this material cost defense. Yes, I spent a lot of stun. Yes, I spent a lot of metal. This is the entire build though, right? This is going to last you to 45 minutes. Um, so once you have this built, I mean, it's, it's very easy to do, right? Like it's, what are we talking here? This is eight, 88 nuts and bolts because we're only using eight gas straps. Uh, you could make, you know, double up on that and, you know, use up a stack of nuts and bolts. Um, again, you know, it's, it's just doubling up on all those materials as well that are irrelevant. Uh, you can make dynamos if you wanted to, cause you're gonna have extra nuts and bolts. Dynamos will give extra power. Oh, excuse me. Dynamos will give extra power versus uh, smashers, etc., etc. So uh, that's uh, that's pretty much it, right? Like crafting materials wise, it's extremely easy to do. You can make legendary wooden floor spikes, no problem, because of the low crafting materials. It like there's there's really no problem to to this build itself. Actually, this is a problem. So you want to put a wall launcher here and, and a wall dart here, but uh, the wall launcher here and the wall dart here is fine. Um, but again, remember make make them come back to the base whenever possible. Um, so I'm glad I caught that at the end. So that was our 45 minute how to get the 45 minute frost night mark build. Um, it's very easy to do. If everybody takes one side, it it goes up um, in two waves very easily. Very 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 easily. Um, if you're paying attention to like how you're farming, um, at that point, it's, it's just figuring out what to farm and where to farm it. Right. Um, if you're having trouble with this build, it's, it's, I'll be honest, it's, it's not the build itself. It's, it's you farming. Uh, so you have to go out there and farm better. 
Um, and some of that's just paying attention. You know, if you see a can of nuts and bolts, loot it. That's seven nuts and bolts right there. If you need bacon, watch out for those little lunch containers. If you need, you know, planks, rough ore, but you can't destroy trees fast enough, maybe take an out outlander with anti-material punch. Um, maybe take an outlander who has good abilities like shock special shock specialist ac um, who has a fantastic shock tower or you know even any of the teddies work i mean striker ac has the best anti-material punch and cooldown in the game so if you want to take them that's fine uh but at that point if you're not getting enough materials with striker ac um you really need to rethink your pathing for farming in general um just because striker ac you should be able to get just about every every trap crafted at least twice within the first wave um well every trap that you need including wall darts um even legendaries um when i did a duo run with cylon i had no problem with it even with uh even losing like one minute due to lag so it, it, it wasn't an issue so keep that in mind when uh when farming um if you have any questions or concerns about the build uh I mean, to be honest, there, there shouldn't be any concerns with the build, but if, if you have any questions or something, or if you have any alterations you want to make, I'm by all means, I'm all ears. I know a lot of people really don't like the bowl. It can be costly. It can take time to set up. But if it's if you get just one person with you who knows the bowl, who can set it up, you know, one person to do the corners, one person to do the walls in between, um, it becomes really easy. Uh, what you can end up doing is, is pretty much just walking along the top here and just doing two at a time. Um, and then, you know, you do that four or five times and you, you've got, uh, you've got one side, right? So it's, it's very easy to set up, um, with two people. It's very, it's not exactly hard to set up with one person. It's, it's just not difficult. Uh, so that's, that's our 45 minute walkthrough. So thank you very much. For